Hey everybody, today we will continue our lectures on frequency response techniques in feedback control systems. In the previous two lectures, we learned how to draw polar plot and Nyquist plot. Now, we will learn how we apply Nyquist stability analysis for feedback control systems. Okay. In the literature, Nyquist stability is dominantly applied for analyzing feedback control systems. For this reason, specific to this semester, we will not talk about how we can apply Nyquist stability for feed forward or open loop systems. Okay, so this is a given a classical feedback topology and let's analyze its closed loop transfer function. D of s is equal to g of s plus 1 plus g of s h of s. And we know from our previous lectures that this part is called g o l s. Okay? We know that the thing that defines the stability of a closed system is the poles of T of S, right? Okay. If they're all in, for example, open left half plane, the system is bipolar stable. But we also know that poles of T of S are roots of 1 plus G O L S, right? Or zeros of this transfer function. Okay. The basic idea in Nyquist analysis for feedback systems is we will plot Nyquist plot of open loop transfer function of the system to comment on stability of the of the whole system, feedback system. It's somewhat easier because you, it means that you don't need to drive whole close loop transfer function. In some sense, it is similar to the root locus because in the root locus we use open transfer function to derive all of the plot with respect to game parameter k. Okay, so before moving on to uh, understanding what a Nyquist stability is, specific this semester we will make some assumptions. Okay, these assumptions here are not technically mandatory for applying Nyquist stability analysis. Okay. But these assumptions simplify Nyquist stability analysis significantly, such that it is easier to understand this topic and the following topics. Okay, so it is not mandatory, and if you look at the textbooks, you will see that they don't make these assumptions at this phase. Okay, so what's our assumptions? GOLS or open loop transfer function is a minimum phase system. So what is a minimum phase system? Is this no poles or zeros in the open right half plane? So this region is not L loft for this phase of the class. Okay. Also, you need to check this criteria, which means that uh, GOLS S, where S is going to zero, should be equal to zero, which is very common, uh, which technically says that the system should be causal. But important thing is the feedback system type should be between zero and two. Okay. So which means that it can be a zero type system, no integrator here, or let's say, okay. So it can be zero. S0, zero, or it can be a single integrator, or we can have double integrator, which means that triple integrator or four order integrator is not allowed for uh, this analysis. Okay, so just keep in mind. So once we achieve this, our second assumption is polar plot crosses the negative real axis at most once. Again, these assumptions including this are not critical or important for applying Nyquist double analysis but it simplify and it will reduce the Nyquist stable analysis in a simpler form. Okay, under these assumptions, we have this uh, reduced definition. T of S is bio stable if the Nyquist plot of GLS, which satisfies this assumption, does not encircle the point minus one plus zero J. Okay, let's show an illustration. This is two uh, empty S planes, and let's assume that Nyquist plot of the first system is like this, okay, so just clear this, okay, and let's change the color for drawing the conjugate, okay, and second one is very similar, let's assume that it's possible, okay, and if we continue like this, it's like this, and let's assume that in the first next plot, minus one, plus 0j is located here. In the second one, minus 1 is located here. 
So if we use a definition which says that t of s is Bible stable if Nyquist plot does not encircle or cross minus 1 plus 0 j point, which means that in this case this is stable, but this is unstable because the region is just encircled or covered by the next plot is this and minus 1 is not equal in this point. In the second case, this region technically encircles or includes the minus 1 point. Okay, once you draw the Nyquist plot, indeed, double analysis is pretty straightforward and easy. Let's solve an example. Okay, so this is the uh, feedback system. Uh, there's no controller, and our open loop transfer function, let's change this, is simply equal to 1 over s plus 1. So what we need to do is, we need to draw the next plot of 1 over s plus 1, which we already did in the previous lecture. Okay, so if you remember, next plot of this transfer function is a full circle, which is located strictly in the right half plane. And we know that minus 1 is in the left half plane, so this system is indeed stable. Okay, so let's check the stability by computing the closure transfer function, which is equal to 1 over s plus 1, 1 plus 1 over s plus 1, or this is 1, sorry. Oh, this is big. I need to change this. Okay, 1 over s plus 1, 1 plus 1 over s plus 1. 1 over s plus 2, r pole is at minus 2 location on the real axis, so this system is stable. And as you can see, we verify using simple uh, checking the root. Okay, so let's solve a slightly different example. Now we have a plant, but we have a controller, which is a p controller. Okay, and the goal is finding the range of k, range of K, but we know that k is greater than zero, such that the transfer function is stable. Okay, so what we are going to do? Let's draw the next plot for k is equal to one. It's this. Okay, and now let's try to analyze the effect of k on the next plot. Normally, what we need to do is we need to uh, draw the next plot of g k times g of s, where g of s is simply equal to this. Okay, so what's the effect of f k? We know that k is a real number, and uh, technically its imaginary part is equal to zero. When k is multiplied with a complex number, it just scales it. There is no phase change. Let's assume that for this point, if k is greater than one, what we do is we don't change phase. We move it here. We do the same thing here. It's somewhere here, here. And uh, was like this, okay. So what we do is we simply scale the whole max plot without changing its shape. And if we keep k as a symbolic variable, our max plot will be exactly the same, but instead the numerical values of specific points will be different, such as instead of 1, we have k, instead of 0.05j, we have 0.5 times kj. Okay, now let's analyze the point of minus 1 with respect to the Nyquist plot. This is here. In the second plot, minus 1 is here. As you can see, no matter what we do with k, the Nyquist plot never encircles minus 5 point. So our conclusion is the system is BIBO stable for all k greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so not only we did an actual analysis for specific k, we technically find the region of k that makes the system stable, which is some sense similar to what we did with the root techniques. Okay, let's solve a different example, which is similar. Here, g of s is equal to 1 over s plus 1 cube, and our controller is same, still k. If we do draw the next plot, we will see that. In this case, as you can see, we have a different structure because now Nyquist plot or specific polar plot crosses the negative real axis. Okay, if I scale the Nyquist plot with k, keeping k as a symbolic variable, I obtain 
next plot something like this. Okay, here instead of 1 we have k and instead of minus 1 over 4 we have minus k over 4. Okay, sorry. Now, where is minus 1? Depending on value of the k, minus 1 can be here or minus 1 can be here since k is greater than 0. And in this case, we know that it should be stable. In this case, this will be unstable. Okay, so we need to check these conditions separately. Let's start with the first case. In this case, we know that minus 1 is less than minus k over 4, which means that k is less than 4. In this region, minus 1 is greater than minus k over 4, or let's say greater than equal to because we know that the system is unstable if it crosses so k is greater than equal to 4 so we know that this is stable this is unstable so the range of k values that makes the system stable is simply k in element of 0 4 the system is stable okay it's kind of very easy if you already write the Nyquist plot but of course, we know that computation of our systems, some systems, Nike plot can be a little bit messy. Okay, let's try to get this intuition from the root tokus. Okay, the Nike plot says that the system is stable for small values of k. At some point, it breaks the stability, it becomes unstable. Okay, so let's go back and try to draw, not completely, but at least partially, the root tokus. In the root tokus, we have triple roots here, minus 1, okay. We know that this part will be on the next plot because this is an odd number. Since it says triple roots, it will have uh, three asymptotes which have 120 degrees angles. Okay, so this is the next plot. It says that the system is stable for small of fields of k and at some point it the root tokus crosses the imaginary axis and it becomes unstable. If you check this point using root tokus techniques that Professor has kind of taught you before, you will see that here k will be equal to 4. Okay, as you can see, there are some similarities with the Nike stability analysis and stability analysis that we perform using the root tokus. But they have different advantages and different features. In root tokus, we can talk about the damping and other kind of features. In the next double analysis, we will talk about robustness metrics that we will learn later. For now, this is enough for the uh, double analysis and some examples. In the next lecture, we will learn a specific case that we cannot cover with the basic Nyquist contour.